Registered Phenomena Code 544 Object Class Omega White Hazard Types Grouped Hazard Invisibility Hazard Immeasurable Hazard Incorporeal Hazard Containment Protocols Presently, the Authority has been unable to contain any documented RPC-544 instances. Due to their multifaceted anomalous abilities, which are primarily anti-memetic and non-Newtonian in nature, further containment attempts have been deemed impractical or entirely impossible. This has led researchers to classify RPC-544 as a self-censoring, high-level anomalous species or collective. MST Victor-01 Tunnel Vision, has been tasked with analyzing and documenting entities in an effort to gain additional insight into their possible origins intentions, or the nature of their existence. These operatives are to be issued up to 5 30 microgram per kilogram l prosectide intramuscular injection vials while in the field. l prosectide has proven 93.4% successful in allowing field agents to identify instances in greater detail. Despite the entity's perceived affable nature, all personnel are advised to avoid contact with RPC-544 instances when under the influence of a bitteric drug. See Addendum 544-16-03. Description: RPC-544 is an unverifiable number of humanoid entities of unknown origin and composition. These entities exhibit various antimimetic properties which render them completely undetectable to all baseline senses. They are fully incorporeal beings and are believed to be incapable of interacting with virtually all forms of physical matter. It has been theorized, based on prolonged observation, that the entities are not cognizant of most non-living matter and are unable to perceive most solid objects. As such, researchers originally misidentified RPC-544 as a paranoid hallucination associated with prolonged bitter excuse. Instances have been observed as both male and female, approximately 160 to 190 cm in height, and with hair of various colors and styles. These factors, along with attire and perceived age, are used to catalog and document distinct instances. To date, the Authority has recorded approximately 150,000 unique instances of RPC-544. However, Due to the limited sample size gathered by MST Victor-01, researchers have extrapolated that there could be up to several million respective instances worldwide. Despite their varied physical descriptions, each instance of RPC-544 displays a similar form of semi-formal dress. Male instances mainly adorn themselves in black three-piece suits, but have been noted infrequently in mess dress uniforms and stress them in suits. Female entities exclusively wear black evening gowns and cocktail dresses with simplistic designs, though these feminine entities have been seen on rare occasions to have small accessories on their persons, such as a small handbag or a ring on their digitus medicinalis. All known RPC-544 entities don a form-fitted, strapless, and featureless white mask. Alongside RPC-544's shared anomalous abilities, each instance exhibits a series of similar behavioral patterns. Entities have predominantly been reported within proximity to humans or other large animals. These entities gather approximately 60 to 100 cm behind an individual, and silently observe their chosen subject for an indeterminate amount of time. During this span, instances will begin to mutely applaud their respective subject upon the completion of any task, however inconsequential they may be. A single subject may be followed by several RPC-544 instances at any given time. Researchers do not currently understand what attracts RPC-544 instances to their observation targets, or the manner in which they observe their subject through their austere masks. Addendum 54414-02 Personnel Report Due to the adverse effects associated with Viterix use, analysts assigned to RPC-544 are required to rotate tasks following two consecutive days in the field. Immediately following a shift rotation, an interview is conducted between on-site personnel and the returning field agents. During these interviews, agents relay first-hand observations to researchers from Sectors 1 through 3 and containment specialist members of ProLab. 
Debrief Interview 544-14-98 Interviewed Agent Dickard Victor-01 Analyst Interviewer Dr. Reaper Senior Researcher Forward This interview was conducted at the end of Agent Dickard's fifth field shift, while assigned to RPC-544. As such, Agent Dickard is the senior most operative familiar with RPC-544 behavioral studies. Begin Log 1435 July 31st, 2000 Right, Agent Dickard, you know the routine. Please present your findings and turn in your used and unused vials of L-prosticide. Slight rustling can be heard as Agent Dickard sets his vials in a secure veteran container on the table. Let's see here, an additional 139 instances to be added to the registry. It uh, also appears he used three vials while on the field. Are you still under the influence of a Vederic drug? Yes. My last injection was about four hours ago, so the effects are starting to wear off. Are you currently experiencing any headaches or nausea? Remember to report any lingering symptoms post-field study. I remember my briefings. This shit always makes my head feel like my eyes are trying to rip through the top of my skull. But the feeling usually goes away after a few hours. Can you believe some of the guys actually like this garbage? Please stay on topic, Agent Dickard, and visit the med bay if the headaches continue. Right. Like I said, they always go away after a while. Coming down is always the worst, though. Everything gets all hazy, and I can hardly identify any of the pale faces. I don't recognize a single one in the room right now. In the room right now? Are you saying there's an instance of RPC-544 in the room at this very moment? Oh yeah. Agent Dickard pauses, briefly, while scanning the room. There's six of them. Where are they? What, what are they currently doing? Well, you have one over your left shoulder right now. It's hard to make out, but I think it's looking at my notes. Uh, another four are gesturing among themselves, giving you their little golf clap. The last one is behind me. I'm assuming it's RPC-544-12302, and it's always following me around. Over my left shoulder. Dr. Reaper reaches over his shoulder in an attempt to touch the entity. Be careful. I have never seen a pale face touch anything, and they specifically avoid touching people. Interesting. I haven't read anything in the reports about instances avoiding contact with anything. Well, they don't move in the same way we do. I've never seen their legs move. They just glide above the ground effortlessly. I'm not exactly sure how fast they can move either, but I've seen them following people in cars and trains just as easily as a person walking. In all my observations, however, I've never seen an instance touch someone. I eventually tried to interact with 12302, and no matter how hard I tried, it always seemed to float further away. It was kind of like trying to touch two magnets together. Interesting findings, Agent Dickard, although you should try to discuss your experiments with the research staff before attempting something. I'm sorry, Doc, but that's all I have for you today. If you or any other members of the research staff have any questions about my observation notes, please find me. Understood, and goodbye for now, Agent. End log, 1439, July 31st, 2000. Notes. Following this interview... Authority personnel launched a brief investigation into the number of RPC-544 instances within each site. The investigation was eventually dropped when containment and research specialists declared RPC-544 non-hazardous and uncontainable. However, it is also discovered that while lead and senior researchers commonly had several entities trailing them, RPC-544 instances seldomly observed CSD personnel. Following the testimonials of Victor-01 field agents and the investigations performed by on-site personnel, researchers have begun to theorize that there may be a direct correlation between physical and emotional well-being in RPC-544. Any persons found to be exceptionally more successful than their peers have been observed with a significantly higher number of instances in their presence. The inverse has also been noticed when recording CSD personnel, individuals with severe depression, or vagrants. RPC-544 instances rarely interact with persons affected by hardships or mental illness. 
while researchers have begun to correlate their findings, they do not currently understand the nature of these behaviors. Consequently, due to the Authority's inability to interact with RPC-544 outside of observation, most current theories are based on conjecture and speculation. The most common rationale held by research staff is that RPC-544 instances passively exhibit a tychokinetic effect on their subjects. A tychokinetic auxiliary property classification is currently pending approval by Director. Caution. The continuation of this document has been restricted to Level 3R personnel and above, by the order of Senior Researcher Dr. Reaper. Personnel caught without the proper authorization may be subjected to disciplinary action. You have been warned. Addendum 54416-03 Incident Report On August 2000, Authority personnel received a distress signal from Agent Dickard while he was presently tasked with field duty pertaining to RPC-544. Victor-01 agents within proximity to Dickard's position were able to swiftly detain him and escort him back to site. Agents noted that Dickard was uncharacteristically silent and visibly disquieted. Furthermore, operatives currently under the effect of L. Prosecti during the incident had not recorded a single instance of RPC-544 30 minutes prior to the incident and for several hours thereafter. Immediately following Victor 01's arrival, Dr. Reaper and several other members of the research staff began conducting debrief interviews on the available agents. Debrief Interview 54416-74 Interviewed Agent Dickard Victor-01 Analyst Interviewer Dr. Reaper, Senior Researcher Forward This interview was conducted following Agent Dickard's seventh field shift while assigned to RPC-544. A routine medical examination was performed on the agent prior to the interview. Agent Dickard showed no signs of physical trauma and exhibits an elevated heart rate consistent with recent vitreic use. Begin Log 2038 August 2000 and what happened out there, Dickard? You hardly said a word since you were brought in, and you ever barely have a scratch on you. I don't know what happened. I should have listened to you, Doc. What did you do, Dickard? I didn't think it would even be possible. I was finally able to touch him. 12302 and I finally touched hands. It was just a slight brush, but I felt an actual physical touch. Are you sure there was actually contact? When did this happen? Agent Dickard pauses, momentarily, while glancing at the wall-mounted clock. Uh, only about four hours ago, and I'm absolutely sure I felt it. I didn't want to come down, so I immediately used my next two vials. I didn't- You injected yourself with your entire supply of l prosticide You- You know how dangerous that could be. I couldn't risk coming down too soon. Plus, 12302 floated off right after it happened. Those pale faces can really move. It ran away from you. He tried to. I found him again just outside my observation post. He was just floating there, out in the open. I don't know how, but I could tell he was upset. Are you claiming RPC-544-12302 had an empathetic effect on you? Is that why you activated your distress beacon? No, it wasn't just a feeling. Not soon after I walked outside, he noticed me again. I've never seen one of them act so deliberate and determined, but he started coming right towards me. I felt frozen watching something I couldn't possibly stop heading straight at me. He stopped just short of my face. He bent down slowly until our faces were right next to each other. Then, he reached up and pulled his mask off. Agent Dickard trails off, as if lost in thought. What did you see, Dickard? I saw... me. It was like looking into a mirror. I don't mean he looked a little like me either. He had my face exactly. He even had the cut I gave myself this morning while shaving. Agent Dickard gestures to a fresh scab on his chin. It felt like our faces were synced down to every painstaking movement. I could barely breathe when our eyes met. I almost didn't notice the others approaching us. 
What do you mean by others? Hundreds of those things. RPC-544, pale faces, whatever you call them. They came from every direction. Under the ground, from above, all over the place. I could hardly see past them as they came in like a wave. They grabbed him. Or maybe I mean me. They grabbed 12302 and started dragging him down and away. It was so silent, I couldn't even hear the crickets. But I saw the look of terror on my face as they dragged him away. My face was twisted as he screamed silently into the ground. Then they were all gone. I don't know what- Was that me they took, Doc? It had my face. Was it part of me? Can I get a suppression team in here? The cell door can be heard opening as ASF personnel move into the room to subdue Agent Dickard. End Log 2047 August 2000 and Notes Due to the actions of Agent Dickard, Victor-01 briefings now explicitly state that operatives are not to interact with any RPC-544 instances while using a bitteric drug. Containment protocols have been updated to reflect as such. Agent Dickard has been detained indefinitely for observation and testing purposes associated with possible exposure to RPC-544 and prolonged bitterix use. Closing note from Dr. Reaper As a result of the rapid injection of l prosectide Agent Dickard's testimony following Incident 544-01 has been heavily scrutinized. The subject has suffered from continued paranoid delusions post-interview. However, the testimonies given by the additional Victor-01 analyst that night on the apparent lack of RPC-544 instances following the event have afforded the story some credence. I would like to remind the rest of the research staff that correlation does not imply causation. We cannot simply assume that RPC-544 is tychokinetic or empathetic effects based solely on circumstantial evidence. We cannot test what we can barely even begin to perceive. We are no closer to understanding RPC-544's effects as we are to proven they even exist.